Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We have some breaking news. We are, of course, following developments in the uh, Israel-Hamas war, but from breaking news in the U.S. Capitol, Steve Scalise, the man elected by the Republican caucus to be the next speaker, but who was short of the votes to do so, has just announced, apparently, inside the Republican conference that he is withdrawing his name from the speakership. We don't know why, other than the whip count vote against him within the Republican caucus today had ballooned to 16 or 17 votes. There were people saying that he could not get to the 217 needed to be elected Speaker of the House. Of course, this comes a week after Kevin McCarthy was deposed by a far-right MAGA caucus, which initiated a motion to vacate the chair that was successful, with eight members voting aye, along with all the Democrats. There's been a speaker Pro temp, Patrick McHenry, since then, serving in a kind of custodial fashion. This is all totally unprecedented in American history. We haven't had this before. It's 100 years since we had a motion to vacate the chair. Amidst a unfolding global crisis, the second in line to the president and constitutional office of Speaker of the House remains vacant with no clear path for this House Republican caucus to rally behind anyone for an election. I believe we have Ali Vitali joining us now to fill us in. Ali, I literally just learned about this before we went to air. What is going on? Chris, I literally just learned about it before you went to air. This is all happening in pretty much real time here. We were confused when Republicans said that they were going to notice a 7.30 meeting. There was no real reason why they would do that. It wasn't clear that Scalise had moved any of the members that said they would never vote for him. It turns out that at, on his way into the meeting, he said he was going to have more conversations. We're going to hear what those conversations were. But it turns out that in the room, he said he was dropping his bid for speaker, aware of the fact that he was going to be shy of the 217 votes that he needed. What's important here is, on the, on the one hand, it's back to the drawing board for the rest of the Republican conference now because they have to go back, likely behind closed doors, do another kind of secret speaker election, see if they can't get consensus at that point, and then try to bring it back to a more public floor vote. We never even hit that phase with Scalise. But there are still going to be people who are jockeying for this, including the man who was Scalise's official challenger in this round of the speaker's race, Congressman Jim Jordan. He's someone who had thrown his support behind Scalise, but he never lost support from some diehards within this conference. I do have to say, though, I don't think it matters who the person is. They are all going to have an immensely difficult road getting to the magic number that they need to actually become speaker. In my conversations with members earlier today, when they did about three hours of basically an airing of grievances behind closed doors, some of them apparently in that meeting even joked that they don't even think Jesus could get 217 votes in this conference. And as much as that's hyperbole and it's a punchline, I'm actually not sure that they're wrong because it is an immensely difficult conference to herd these cats within. Every single vote counts. Every individual's concern or question counts. And that's what makes this so difficult. And it's why Kevin McCarthy had such a hard time back in January. Yeah. And we should note again that that it, when you when you have four votes to spare in the caucus, right, yeah. uh, and you're expecting a party line vote because you're elected by the entire House, you may get six or seven people who are no's, right, who have mutually exclusive asks. I mean, this yeah. was the thing that was unfolding that, with me is that it's one thing that there's a block that says we're a hard no and we want these three things. If you've got six yeah. or seven or eight or 17 in the case of the last whip count that NBC, I think you, Ali, and your reporting have yeah. produced about the Scalise no votes and they're all over the map, it's not even like there's a negotiation you can do. Exactly. It's not like you're going conference by conference, caucus by caucus, and saying, OK, the moderates want X, the Freedom Caucus folks want Y. How do we put those things together? No. Scalise and whoever comes after have gone literally individual member by individual member. Not only is that immensely inefficient, but it also means that some of these asks are going to come in direct clash with each other, and you can't appease everyone. So then you have to figure out, are you appeasing enough people to lose the people that you can't get on board? It's a true balance. Act, and it's one that, frankly, again, most of the members that I've been in touch with for the last 
two weeks or so, up through the motion to vacate, and even now, as they try to pick who comes next, there is not a clear consensus within this conference. Even when Matt Gates was threatening, I'm going to do a motion to vacate, the open question we had was, okay, if not McCarthy, then who? There was no clean answer then, and there's no clean answer now. And I know that for some Americans, this might seem inside baseball or not important to their life, but when you look at the larger geopolitical landscape right now, this is at the core of the way the House functions. Yes, it's in the line of succession for the presidency, you mentioned that, but it's also the way that they can do as little as condemn Hamas for what happened in Israel, and at most of sending military and humanitarian aid to Israel. Those are key priorities here, but they are effectively unable to do any governing whatsoever because they cannot decide who the Speaker of the House is going to be. It's an uh, important point there. I will note that, of course, speakership elections happen in the entire uh, House. Uh, yeah. In other state houses, sometimes there's been deals cut to get to someone consensus drawing across party lines. That I don't think anyone wants to do that now, but I, I, one imagines there might be some conversations uh, along those lines the longer this goes. There does have to be a speaker soon because the business yeah. of governing has to happen. <laughs> Ali Vitali, who is on this story, <laughs> rushed to a camera at the last minute. Uh, thank you very much for doing that. Yes. Of course.